Hey, yo, what's going on, all my gamers, all my Weathering Waves and Genshin gamers? So, I feel like this is always a discussion with me. I always talk about this stuff, and another video has come across my feed called Weathering Waves is a better game than Genshin Impact, all the reasons why. Now, I want to hear exactly why some why it would be better, and then I'll give my opinion, of course. You know how I do, you know. Uh, man, Sensory Tower's coming up soon, too. I want to see how that's going to turn out. So, let's see. Weathering Waves is a better game than Genshin Impact. Wow. Yep. I said what I said. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all the reasons. What's this background? It's cool stuff. Is why I think that is. Now, before mm -hmm. anybody comes for me, which I realize is going to happen anyway, right. I want you to know that I have played both games extensively. Hey, me I've too. I've spent over three times as much money in Genshin not, Impact than I have me. in Weathering Waves. I have Actually... No, yeah, I have because I I haven't really spent that much money on Weathering Waves except for like battle passes. I always buy battle passes for these games. I don't know why. A Raiden Shogun at C2, and I don't care how bad the meta is for freeze teams, Kamisato Ayaka will always have a special. I still place use Ayaka, heart, but today, but my I Ayaka is like pretty good, so it's like I might as well use her, right? I want to tell you about all the things that I can come up with where Genshin Impact just quite honestly falls short. When compared with Weathering Waves, and if your first response back to me—I mean, it's a nine-minute video, so I'm really, I'm really curious to what he has to say—is something about the Sensory Tower revenue reports. Right. Just go ahead and stop because I don't take into account oh, how much money a gotcha game has bamboozled players. I do. No, I don't. Into spending in what, for all of them, are very predatory pricing models. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking into account any of that as far as the quality of any individual game. But hey, first, if you're new here on my channel, what's up? I'm Solace, and I make Solace. videos about gotcha games. Guides, Solace. news, just whatever I feel like making. So nice. if that sounds like your cup of tea, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Mm. All right, now let's get into today's video. The right. first thing on my list is going to be how generous the developers are for Weathering Waves and how that impacts the new player experience. The new player experience is going to be significantly better than it is for Genshin Impact for one simple reason. And that reason is Wuthering Waves gives you three Gigi. free five-star characters from the standard banner, as well as something like 30 poles, 30 free poles for the limited banner, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Now, Genshin Impact just recently did a thing where you can also get a five-star character of your choice from yeah. the standard banner, but it's only a single character, and it took them over four years to add this to the game. That's true. And... I mean, honestly, you only really need the single pull because the only good character on there is Tainari. <laughs> like, if you really want to get to pretty far and actually play what me would be meta, yeah, you kind of only need one pull because the only person you would really want is Tainari if you don't have, like, Nahida or Al Haytham or something like that as someone who doesn't even use Al Haytham. I know he's good. I just, you know, I don't build him. I finally got him to level 80, so people can stop asking me about that. <laughs> I don't have any artifacts on him, though, because artifact farming sucks. But, yeah. I, yeah, I I always have this question in my head, which I feel like I don't know if many people have asked. I wonder how generous Wuthering Waves would have been had they not messed up the launch. Because the launch was an absolute disaster. It was a, it was such a terrible launch. But it wasn't, it's like getting a, it's like getting, oh God, here we go. It's like getting ace in a game. You guys give up all the kills early game, and then you just, like, play for mid game. Yeah, the early game kind of sucked, and you want to talk about it, but it's like, well, you know, we have everything we need now. <laughs> you might as well just forget about it. And they never give Dehia. out free ne <laughs> Never pull for Dehia. She sucks. The main part of but she is hot, though. I love gotcha her. gotcha game is being able to play with characters that you like, and Wuthering Waves allows you to do that from the very beginning of the game. Kuro Games has honestly mm. been so generous with what they've given us in Wuthering Waves that right. it's actually had like some kind of reverse psychology effect on me where I've actually ended up spending more money in the game than I would have otherwise. And I actually don't spend money on the game at all. that's a segue I... into my next point, which is the character and weapon banners. Now, Genshin Impact just recently introduced a change, coincidentally, not long after Wuthering Waves <laughs> came out, that made their character and weapon banners a little bit better. But, the... but, I mean, here's my thing, right? And here's my question. What, what, what if, hear me out, what if there just wasn't any weapon banners? You know what game doesn't have a weapon banner? God is a victory, Neek. Anyways. The crazy thing is, is that even with the new changes, the banners still absolutely suck when compared with the Wuthering Waves banners. Oop. 
in Wuthering Waves, the hard pity for a five star character is eighty pulls. Right. And for me, usually I get a five star character sometime before eighty pulls, like usually in the soft pity, which I think is around sixty nine. I think I've gotten really lucky with Wuthering Waves because I got Shorekeeper, Shore, Shorekeeper C one at like ten pulls ish. Which is a uh, nice. That was a mistake. I should have gotten a better character. I should have gotten not a better character. <laughs> She's an amazing character. I should have gotten the next character. Are guaranteed. They are guaranteed at 80 pity. So that right. means no 50-50, no other still have unwanted weapon. weapons. I'm trying to get that right you now. You are getting the weapon that you want at or before 80 pulls mm. every single time. And look, I know full well that gotcha games in general are just a major ripoff, but these are the best <laughs> yeah. and most generous banners that you're going to find in any gotcha game that's out right now. I don't know when Nick. I'm just saying Nikkei's second anniversary just came around. I logged into 50 pulls on the permit on the not not the permanent banner on the limited banner. Oh, that's what I'm saying. And by definition, this also makes Wuthering Waves more free to play friendly. It's just an right. L for Genshin. I think I absolutely think this. Okay, here's what I will say because of the way that these two games are. I think one of the reasons is because of how Genshin works with the element system. I guess it would be the element system, but also just because of how good the early game four stars are. And the way that the combat works in Wuthering Waves, I would say that they're both free to play friendly, especially compared to like Zenla Zone Zero, right? Zenla Zone Zero is awful for free to for like free to play, but it's just it's still a good game. I love Zenla Zone Zero, but you know, I think the four stars in Genshin makes up for the fact that you don't really get a lot of wishes, or I should say, you know. You don't get free five. Like, you could probably go through the game with nothing but four stars in Genshin Impact. But that's just because the game has been out long. So a lot of the game, a lot of the characters in the early game are busted. Like, you get Sucrose for free. You get, I think, Kalei for free. Kalei is busted just because Dendro's busted. And the way Weathering Waves works, like, I have Chisha. That is my main DPS of all my teams. She does the most damage, and I have Jin. Oh, actually, no. She doesn't do the most damage because I have Jinshi. Jinshi's absolutely busted. But... The way that you could just dodge and maneuver around, and it basically comes down to mechanical skill. Wuthering Waves is also free to play friendly, but it's like free to play friendly for different reasons. Way around. Now, I'm going to have to break up this next part into several subcategories, oh, but let's go through and see how Wuthering Waves and Genshin Impact compare in terms of content and gameplay. Mm. So, first thing I want to talk about is combat. Don't right. get me wrong. I enjoy Genshin's combat very much. Genshin's I do too. elemental reaction system is super cool and it is really fun. 69 HP. But oh, he's that is kind challenge. of all you get. The game is easy, and once you learn the elemental reactions, that's it. Enemies dendro, and bosses woo. and mobs <laughs> are just sponges for damage numbers, and you can just mindlessly make everything ride it dendro. Away. In Wuthering Waves, you have dodges, counter attacks, intro and outro skills, mm. and a stagger bar for enemies. All True. of those elements in Wuthering Waves make the combat feel way more dynamic in every single fight. You sometimes That's actually true. have to think, and I know that can be nope. a scary no, word, I don't. but trust me, it's worth it. No, so, I don't. So, while I do acknowledge that it is possible... I don't, but I'm just... <laughs> I'm just Chad, I'm just him, so I don't have to think. I'm just a better player. possible for somebody to enjoy Genshin Impact's combat more. Mm. If anyone is to try and say that Genshin Impact's combat is just objectively better, that is just false. You can say that it is easier or that you enjoy what is it happening more, on my but screen? that's about it. Okay, now let's move on to world exploration. This is an area yeah. where Wuthering Waves absolutely blows Genshin Impact out of the water. Mm. You know the stupid and annoying stamina bar <laughs> that you have in Genshin Impact that runs out after like 10 feet of sprinting? Yeah. In Wuthering Waves, you can sprint to your heart's content with... No I do think that that's the, something... Like I've always preached about this. I think that Genshin Impact would just be a better game without a stamina bar. Like, there's no reason I have a stamina bar outside of combat. Like, what is the point? I want to know what the point is to have a stamina bar out of combat. Like, in this day and age, like, why, bro? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, it's really dumb. And then, you know, with the Natland characters, without the phlogiston bar and all that, you only get to run around with the Natland characters for, like, what, maybe two seconds, three seconds? And to be fair, the the abilities are on a low cooldown. So say if you have Kachina, Shion, uh, Sh uh, what's her name? Why? Wow. Wow. I can't remember her name. Shalonin. If you have Shalonin, Kachina, and Maulani in a team, and maybe even Kanich, then you would be able to basically use it infinitely. But at the same time, you need to buy three of the characters, right? Kachina you get for free. 
but Shalonen and Kachina and Kanich are all perma banner characters, or not perma banner characters, limited banner characters. So yeah, it it is really, it, it kind of sucks. And then to use them outside of Natlin is even worse. No stamina bar. You can also run up walls, wow. double jump, and there's a grapple. I love Sun Hua. Also in the Wuthering Waves live stream for version 1.3. We just learned. Hey, we have a we have a grapply hook too. His name is Kinich. <laughs> adding even more quality of life and ways for world traversal when Black Shores releases. I literally feel so cringe. Was this before Black Shores released? Because, eh, yeah, whatever. Now every single time that I'm playing Genshin and I run out of stamina while climbing a wall cringe, at the same Jack. pace that Joe Biden <laughs> unsuccessfully climbs up a flight of stairs, and also in the same vein as world exploration is mm. mining now this is one of those really uh, small mining. things but what? in my opinion all of these small mining. things do start to add up but in genshin impact when you're mining with any character that doesn't have a claymore it feels like you are chiseling away at mount everest with a toothpick but in what but like i get that i do but why would you do that in the first place <laughs> it, I, I don't under, like, i get it i do I get it, I get it, I got it. But, like, if you know it's not going to work, why would you do it? At that point, you're just, like, being stubborn. <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> I don't understand. Now, me, since I've been playing for a long time, of course, I've been playing Genshin since day one, I have Zhongli, so I don't even have to, you know, I don't have to do none of that. Plus, I have a lot of, I have a few Geo characters with Claymore, so I have, uh, what's her name? Why can't I think of these characters' names? Am I dumb, chat? Chat, I'm cooked. I can't remember any of the characters' names. Uh, I have Navia. So I have Geo, plus I have a Claymore, so it's, like, you know, easier. Mothering Waves, pretty much any character can break rocks with relative ease. I will say this, though. I have not used any of these mining materials at all since the game has started. I don't know what this stuff is for. <laughs> I, just break the, I just break the materials just because I want to do it. Plus, as a cheese show player... It's not really that easy to do with a gun. I'm just saying. Chan Li, for example, can break rocks with Aboba? one hit. And most of the other characters, with Aboba. the exception of rectifier users. Seriously, why do you go what do you go mining for? Like what do you need that stuff for? I don't know. I legitimately don't use that stuff. Can break them pretty quickly as well. Okay, I'm so mining. next up on my list is endgame content. I'm mining. If you've ever hit the end game in Genshin, you probably know that the end game just consists of basically you just keep leveling your characters. True. Grind artifacts, do your spiral True. abyss, True. and then you log back in for real when there's an actual story update. True. Now, I know they added that new mode recently. Imaginary again, theater. Coincidentally, not long after Wuthering Waves came out, mm. but it's only one more mode and it's not that great. Now, in Wuthering Waves. Uh, Imaginary, yeah, Imaginary Theater is not great. I played on the, I didn't know this, but I played it on the hardest mode and I was like, wow, this is so hard for no reason. I wonder why. Maybe because I played it on hard mode. <laughs> I, it really is just like a character stat check. So that's why I have been starting to build my other characters now. Just because if I want to do Imaginarium, Imaginarium Theater, I need to like throw some characters I don't want at the beginning so I can get them to the end. Because I didn't get a, I haven't finished it this last time. I got to the last boss and I'm like, I don't have any characters that can do enough damage. Fuck. All right. Whatever. You have the Tower of Adversity, the Elusive Realm, and Hologram bosses. The Tower of Adversity could admittedly use some changes, but that's basically your Spiral Abyss equivalent. The Elusive Realm is a roguelike mode, and honestly, in my opinion, it is absolutely incredible. And they add updated- Wait, which, a bit, which one? ...is a roguelike changes, but that's basically your Spiral Abyss equivalent. The Elusive Realm is a roguelike mode- and Isn't Elusive Realm just, what's it called, simulated universe? Honestly, in my opinion, it is absolutely incredible. I should have done it. I didn't even do it. it with every new iteration that, that just continuously keep making it better. The hologram bosses, though, I think. I think the hologram bosses is sick. The only thing about Tower of Adversity is, you know, because it is kind of hard to get echoes properly and farming for them really sucks. It's like I can't really do the end game stuff, but that's more of a personal problem. I mean, I can always. I can always thug it out and try to fight them anyways, but they're bullet sponges at the end, so they're not really going to... It doesn't really matter how much I can dodge and weave if I just can't kill them in time. I think are the best part of the Now, I think for holograms, that's different because that's actually hard, and that's really cool. The game. For anyone who wants it, they essentially just provide a tough challenge, which is something that just quite literally doesn't exist in Genshin. 
And part of the fun for the I hologram imagine, bosses is hard. actually just re-clearing them with different teams and different characters Did you? just to see what you can do. And considering that wow. Wild Waves just came out a few months ago, I would anticipate that there's going to be even more in-game content coming in the future. Now, I can go either way on this, but sometimes, sometimes I don't want to read the story, and sometimes I just want to get back into the action. Well, right. guess what Wuthering Waves has that Genshin Impact does not. Ooh, if a you skip guessed button. a story skip button, you would be correct. Genshin players, wow. myself included, have been asking... Can't you only skip, like... Oh, no, I think only in Zenla Zone Zero you could skip story scenes, but you can't skip dialogue options. I think in Wuthering Waves, you can do both. For this, for years. But in Wuthering Waves, if you're not in the mood to read, Gatekeeper. you don't have Dreamless. to. Simple as that. And in version 1.3 of Wuthering Waves, they are adding a new feature where when you do skip the dialogue, it's still going to give you a summary of what it is that you skipped so that you know what you missed. <laughs> See that mouse leg? Uh, yeah, I, I know Azure Lane does that. I, don't, I, I still don't read it. I still don't read what it says. But yeah, I know Azure Lane does that. Huge W from Kuro Games. Okay, so next, let's talk about the ecosystem in Wuthering Waves versus- Ecosystem fucking sucks. I will say it now, and I know people aren't gonna like it. The ecosystem and echo farming is absolutely fucking awful in this game. This shit is actual ass. I don't have, I did like, please, bro. This shit is awful. Versus the artifact system in Genshin Impact. There's That's really not, any not better. a whole lot to say with this comparison. Literally just everything about the ecosystem in Wuthering Waves is better than the artifact system in Genshin. I wouldn't say that. No, no definitely not. In, fact, in Genshin, it is... I, I think... So here's the thing, right? I enjoy the artifact system a bit more in Genshin Impact because you just kind of really need to match what you need with where it's supposed to go, right? So if you have an attack DPS, you just put... Most of the time, you put attack sands their respective geo the respective thing like geo or, or what do you call it pyro goblet and then a circlet of like crit rate or crit damage and then you're done right at that point then you just kind of roll the dice and you just kind of farm artifact sets you're always are you you are, you farm artifacts and you're always going to get xp in which you can use right tell me why i have to if i want to reroll artifacts that's fine why can't I take the echoes that I have and then put them into the artifacts that I don't that I'm trying to level up? I keep saying artifacts, I keep switching words. If I use the echoes that I want to reroll, or if I don't want to reroll the echoes and I just want to put them in as X, echo XP, I can't do that. I need to go and physically get echo XP. And they give you maybe I'm level 70 right now, they give me three per drop for the gold one like bro i get i i don't understand this shit is awful plus it takes like 60 uh what do you call it it takes 60 stamina to do and i don't get what i want and you know i'll get a bunch of three what do you call it three costs i need one cost bro i also need one cost like pre like please how do i get one cost i guess i can go out into the world and i think i do like the fact that you can go out into the world and free farm echoes which i would have been doing and getting nothing but free farming echoes if i could have put the echoes into xp on the echoes that i want i don't understand or let me you know get the echoes that i don't want and then convert them into echo xp like that that there's no reason why that shouldn't be a thing i quite literally there will never be a reason when you can explain it to me why that is not a thing so that's why i like artifact system better an endless grind and at the end of that endless grind you probably still won't have an artifact with the correct main stat that you want now they did just add a new mechanic where you can get an artifact with the main stat that you want that has its own that has its own problems which i i can go on forever about but it takes why months i got catfished for with just that and i'm artifact. so and then your upset subsets about are it. probably still gonna roll like shit yeah weathering waves on the other hand luckily the first time i did it i have a recording of it i the first thing that i got in that way with the crafting an artifact set unfortunately it all went into crit rate and crit damage so i can't complain but i know it has the ability to not do that and that sucks. Braids open world exploration into its ecosystem 
and there are game mechanics to where you can pretty regularly get these items called malleable echoes, which allow you to choose an echo with the main stat of your choice. And the fact that you can use your echoes in combat as an entire But it only gives you it only gives you that with the three cost. Bro, I need one cost and I need XP. That's the problem extra layer of complexity like i said there's really not a whole lot to compare here when talking about which system is better no absolutely absolutely it is absolutely not better unless they give us a lot more echo xp or we can put echoes into xp like not and i don't mean echoes that have already been leveled and then you take that you know le less what do you call it less xp than what you put in that doesn't count I don't count that because, like, let me put the zero cost or the zero XP that I put into it and let me get use those as XP because if that's not going to happen, then it's not better, bro. It's just not. And now let's just talk about the devs. One thing that really stands out devs, about Wizard listen. Waves is how quickly Kuro Games responds to feedback. Mm. And they're kind of doing that out of necessity if you think about it, right? That's true. Because they know and every other game developer knows that they will not, not be able hey, to get away fuck. with what Genshin Impact has done over the last four years. That's Genshin true. is a special case. I, I always say this. I do think that the Genshin devs... The way that Genshin devs fix problems is not that they listen to the players. is that they just... You kind of, every time they fix a problem, you have, you basically roll the dice. It's another gotcha step, this system if you think about it. You roll the dice on whether they're going to fix what you wanted them to fix or if they're just going to fix something that no one else has ever thought about. Right? Like, <laughs> it's quite literally, you roll the dice. Oh, no, they fixed something. I We want, you know, stamina out of combat. Oh, no, they gave us an artifact system that you can maybe do once every patch. Damn it. <laughs> well, you were almost there. You almost fixed it. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But moving forward, the open world gotcha space is expanding. And in order to compete for your game time and your money, the devs have to do better than the Genshin devs. <laughs> Which, admittedly, is not hard to do at all. All right, so if you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on my future gotcha content. Why did he get so loud for no reason? Anyways, chat. All this to say, I think we all know which is the, which is the better game here that we all need to play, and that is Nikkei, chat. We all need to just migrate over to Nikkei. They're having their second anniversary. Let's go over there and have a good time. I just got Cinderella. I'm all about it. Anyways, chat. You know, they're, they're, the games have their own charm to them and things that you can and can't like. Like, if you don't like... Genshin Impact for your own reasons. That's cool. If you just, you know, tribalism, that's kind of weird. Because if you don't like a game, you should not like it in a, your own reason, right? Don't just listen to what people say and be like, oh, this game sucks. Because I still like Genshin. I mean, I love Genshin Impact. I've been playing it since day one. You know, I love Honkai Star Rail. I love all these games, right? I love a bunch of games. You know, we play all kinds of gacha games around here because gacha games are just fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're just a good time, you know. When I when, this is what I do now that I'm not in, like competitive gaming and PvP games and stuff like that. You know, gotcha games are fun, chat, and you know, it it it, it just has a sense of community when it's like we all talk about gotcha games. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Chat, comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you gamers in the next one. Bye. In the